Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, whenever you're watching this, welcome to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be exploring supply and demand charts. This video is all about understanding what's going on on these charts and understanding what will happen when different factors are introduced to a market. So make sure you have a good understanding of what demand is separately and supply because you'll have to know those two things before you can put it all together. If you need help with that, check out some of my videos. You can click the links in the description below or some of the cards on the top right. Now enough of me talking, let's figure out how to read and interpret a supply and demand chart. Now, while watching this video, make sure to take notes. That's going to be really important. Be active in your learning. You can use your notebook or you can even use the guided notes that I create. The guided notes go along with all my videos. You can find them in the description below. But note taking will help you better understand here. It's not as impactful if you're just being a passive learner. So participate throughout the video. Now, when looking at a supply and demand chart, there's a couple things we can see. One, we're going to see that demand is always downward sloping. Now the reason why it's downward sloping is because of the law of demand. As prices go down, demand will go up. On these charts, our quantity will always be on the bottom and our price is always going to be going vertical. It's always going to be going up. So that'll stay the same every time you're looking at any of these charts. Supply on the other hand is upward sloping and that's because of the law of supply. As the prices go up, people are willing to sell it for more because they can make more money. The other thing to make sure you understand is the equilibrium. That's going to be our X marks the spot. The reason why this is important is this is where we have no shortage or surplus. Now what's a shortage and a surplus? That's really important to understand. If I have a shortage, I'm not going to have enough products for everyone to buy it. Normally what that means is my price was too low. If I sell anywhere underneath the equilibrium, so if I decrease my price, we can see that our demand goes up. When our demand goes up, then we can also see that our supply is going down. Now what happens is we have more people wanting to buy it than we have people willing to sell it. So we'll have people who were willing to buy it, but now they can't. We have a shortage. They could have sold to more people. On the other hand, what happens if I raise my price too high? If I raise my price above that equilibrium, I can see now that my supply will go up. Producers are willing to sell more now because of the price change. At the same time though, the law of demand is at play and we'll see our demand goes down. Now we're going to actually have a surplus. So I'm going to sell to everyone who is willing to buy it, but I'm going to have leftover product. I'm going to have stuff sitting on a shelf or in my inventory. So for here we can see that we actually produced too much. There wasn't enough demand to be able to sell everything. That's why this equilibrium is so important. This is where our demand and our supply meet. So we'll have no shortage and no surplus. All of our products get sold and everyone who wanted to buy one was able to get one. Hopefully this is making sense. These are the important things to be able to understand when looking at any supply and demand chart. The next really important thing that you'll have to understand when looking at a supply and demand chart is when we see shifts, a demand shift, when the entire thing is shifting over. We're not just seeing a change within the same demand, we're actually getting an entire new demand. So on here we can see right now we have our D1 and D2. So we can see our price is actually increasing. So it's going from P1 to P2, referencing price. And because of that then we're seeing our quantity change. So we're seeing our quantity go from Q1 to Q2. Now the question is though, is this increasing or decreasing? So take a second, try to figure it out. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. But is demand increasing or decreasing? If you said it's increasing, you're correct. The important thing to remember here is whenever we're looking at these charts, zero is always on the bottom left corner. So when looking at that, we have to understand that whenever we're shifting outwards towards the right, we're going to be increasing. Every single time, just remember, as you move farther away from zero, it's going to be increasing. Now, demand makes sense. The next one though, when we're looking at this change now, now we can see our S1 and S2, so our supply is actually changing, can be maybe a little bit more tricky for some. Maybe for others, you've already figured it out. The question here is, is supply increasing or decreasing? So take a second, if you need to pause the video, pause the video, but what's happening with our supply now? If you said the supply is increasing, you're correct. Now this is a weird thing. For some of you, your brain is going to be telling you that it's decreasing because we can see that it looks like it's going down. 
Now, one of the things to remember here is while our price might be dropping, our quantity is actually going up. So price and quantity are going to have different things occurring there. So what we can see though is we are actually moving farther away from zero. So this is going to be showing an increase in our supply. So even though your brain might be telling you that it's going down, just remember, no, it's going farther away from zero, it's going up. Sometimes you need to pause a little bit when looking at some of these problems and then kind of think it through. All right, let's take a minute to just pause and actually do a couple of practice problems. See how you're getting some of these concepts. We're gonna be practicing shortage, surplus, and also our equilibrium and kind of reading just a basic chart. So right now on the screen you can see I have a couple questions. I want you to answer these questions, pause this video, then when you have the answers, unpause the video and I'll go over them. Good luck! Now the first question is asking what would happen to this market if we were selling it at $2? The important thing here is to understand I only care what's going to happen at the $2 price range. I don't care what happens at the other price ranges. Now the reason why is because those are all different quantities at different price levels. The question is just asking what's happening at $2. A lot of students get confused and will try to use the equilibrium in a question like this. Make sure you don't do that, unless the equilibrium is at $2. If a question ever says a certain price range, just focus on that price point. So from $2, to make it easier, draw a horizontal line all the way across your chart. That way you can see exactly where we're focusing on. At $2, I can see that my demand is at 40, while my quantity supplied is only at 30. So what we would see is we're going to have a shortage. We only have 30 units being sold, but 40 people want to buy it. We're going to have a shortage of 10 units. So to get that, we just have to get the differences between the two. Only 30 things are being sold, yet we have 40 people wanting to buy it. So 10 people are going to be out of luck. Our next question is asking, what would happen if we decided to sell at $5? Well, what we'll have to do then is again, draw that horizontal line across. We're just focusing on that $5 range. When we do that, we can see our supply is currently at 60, but our demand is only at 10. So what we're going to have here is a surplus. We're going to have 50 actual extra units. Now how I got that then is I'm going to take my 60, which is the supply. I'm only going to sell 10 of those because my demand is 10. So I'll have 50 units left over. Hopefully that's kind of making sense. Our last question is asking us what would be our price for our equilibrium and also the quantity at our equilibrium. What we have to do here is find that X marks the spot. We can see actually it's going to be about $2.50. It's between three and two. For our quantity, it's going to be about 35. It's right between 30 and 40. Now we can see that on the chart because we have our X marks the spot. That's that perfect area where our supply and demand meet. This makes it so that there's no surplus or shortage. So it's important for us to try and strive for there because that would be our best outcome. Hopefully this is still making sense. Let's get into a couple other practice problems looking at what would happen with some market shifters. For these next questions, we can see we have a bunch of different markets on the screen right now. What I want you to do is try to figure out the answer for these two questions. We have different situations that are happening and I want you to identify the correct market. Pause this video and try to figure it out. One of the first things to do for any problem like this is identify what's going to happen for each of these different markets. I can see for market A, we're seeing a shift in our supply. Now I have to figure out, is this an increase or a decrease? The important thing to understand, remember, is whenever we're moving further out, when we're moving away from zero, when we're moving away from that corner, that 90 degree angle, we are going to be increasing. So my supply here is increasing. For market B, I can see that my demand is now increasing. For market C, supply is moving closer to R0. We're moving closer inward. It's going to be decreasing. And the same for D, except for this is our demand is decreasing. For any quiz or test, if you have problems like this, I would recommend just marking it down, right? Supply going up or supply going down. That way you'll understand right away and you won't get confused. Now the first question is saying, hey, which of these markets would best show an increase in consumer income for the market of 4K TVs? So what we have to know here is that we are seeing an increase in everyone's income. And we're seeing all of a sudden now, we're trying to focus on the, at least this market of just 4K TVs. I want to know what's going to happen to the sale of 4K TVs if everyone gets more money. By understanding that 4K TVs are maybe a luxury good or probably now just a normal good, I can understand the relationship between money and TVs. What happens when people have more money, they can afford then more TVs, especially 4K, which are higher end. So if we actually saw a decrease in income, people probably couldn't afford these expensive TVs and we would probably see people buy less. By understanding this, 
I would know that the answer for this one's probably going to be B. Our demand is going to shift outwards. If more people have more money, they're going to purchase more normal goods because now they can afford them. So our demand would increase. The next question is looking at the markets, but instead of TVs, what we're seeing here is the government is actually putting more regulations on and it's putting regulations on input costs. Input costs are things that go into producing something. So the government is now regulating it more, which normally means it's going to become more expensive. For this one, the answer is C. Now, the reason why it's supply is we don't have enough information to know about a change in price. All we know is it's now becoming more expensive to produce products. So what's going to happen is we're probably going to see our producers producing less at each price point because now it became more expensive for them. If this question had an end, the price increase, then we could probably assume it would be multiple of these. It might also be a demand decrease if the price was going up. One tip for any of these problems, if you ever see one that has an end and we have another situation happening within the same statement or question, it probably is referencing multiple charts. And so odds are, if it's a multiple choice, it's going to be one that's either all the above or it might be one that has two or three charts in it. It again depends on how many variables are happening. Normally though, for any question like this, if it's just referencing one variable change, it's only going to be referencing one of the charts. Hopefully that's making sense on how to interpret charts like this and to identify different markets based on situations in the real world. I hope so far this video has helped you. We have a couple more things to go into, so don't tune out just yet. Make sure you're still paying attention and following along. We're going to do one more practice problem and then we're going to look at a couple different charts just to understand elasticity. By the end, the goal is for you to understand all the things that you need to about supply and demand charts. Now for this problem, it's a little bit tricky. We have a couple different options. This is going to be a multiple choice question, and I want you to figure it out before I go over the answers. So I'll read the question and kind of show the visual of the chart, and then let you try to figure it out. And then, I'll, of course, I'll explain it. So we have which of the following will shift our demand curve for an inferior good to the right? Now, we can see our chart here, and this is what it visually is looking like. But the important thing here is you have to figure out which of these options is true. So pause this video, take your time, and when you're ready, unpause the video. I can see right here that it's asking me about an inferior good and shifting our demand to the right. Remember, right means it's increasing. We're moving further away from zero. We can see that actually in our visual. We're moving up. We're moving away from zero. So I want to know what's going to make an inferior good see an increase in demand. Inferior goods, remember, are cheaper goods. Most of the time, cheaper goods we see an increase in demand for when people have less money. Because if I have more money, I'm going to buy some better quality goods. So let's look now at our choices. So we have for A, a decrease in income. So far, this one works. The reason why is because, well, when people have less money, they're more likely to buy inferior goods. They have to be more frugal. They have to make better choices with their money and are going to purchase lower maybe quality items or cheaper items just in general. Just because it's an inferior doesn't always mean that it is not quality. At the same time though, let's make sure we go through all the other options because maybe there's multiple correct answers or there's one that's pretty close and similar or we might have an all of the above. So for B, we have a decrease in the price of a substitute good. Now, one of the things to understand here is what does a substitute good mean? If I'm looking at my chart, I'm trying to see how can I increase demand for an inferior good. What would happen if a substitute good to my inferior good all of a sudden saw a decrease in price? If I have good A over here, this is my inferior good, and my substitute good over here, nothing's happening with the price here, I know these two are substitutes, but all of a sudden this substitute good, good B, goes down in price. What's going to happen? We're going to see more people starting to buy my substitute good. And what would happen then over here for my inferior? Well, what's going to happen is our demand will go down because our substitute just got cheaper. So that would actually decrease our demand. It would move it to the left. So we wouldn't want that option. So we can cross that one off right now. That one is not the correct answer. What about C, an increase in the price of a complement good? Well, break it down again. What's happening here? If we have an inferior good and we have a complement good to that inferior good, and all of a sudden now this good, good B, our complement good, goes up in price. It becomes more expensive. What's gonna happen over here? Well, with complement goods, remember, that you buy them together. If my complement good just got more expensive, I'm going to buy less of that. The law of demand is at play there. 
well, if I'm buying less of this good and I normally buy this good and my good over here together, what's gonna happen? Well, I'm gonna buy less of my inferior good. So again, we're going to see a decrease in our quantity. We're gonna move the opposite way. It's gonna to go to the left. So we can see that that would not also be the right answer. So we could cross that one off. The next one is none of the above. We already know that, well, that one can't be because our A does work and our last one is all the above. We know that B and C don't work. So the correct answer here is A, a decrease in income. Hopefully this makes sense. Make sure to break these problems down just like I did in this video. While it may seem a little time consuming, it'll help you understand exactly what you're answering. And that way too, if you get one kind of stuck or if you're confused, you can troubleshoot it and break it down word by word. That's a lot more effective than trying to rush through these because every word does matter when it comes to economics. The last thing we're going into is just how to visually see elasticity within a supply and demand chart. Now, in order to know for sure if it's an elastic demand or supply or an inelastic, we're gonna have to find coefficients and do some math. Don't freak out about that. We're not gonna be doing it in this video, but if you do need help with that, click on my card on the top right. That'll help you better understand those concepts. For here, I want you just to start to get an idea of how to visually understand what's happening in some of these charts. So if we're looking at this chart over here, I can see that my price has a pretty big move here. I'm going all the way from $5 all the way up to 20. And our demand is changing, but it's not that much. I have to move my price a lot just to get my demand to decrease. This is gonna show inelastic. Now the demand here is inelastic because it's not that sensitive to price changes. We're gonna to have to have a big change in price in order to get just a little bitty change in demand. While at the same time, if I look at this chart, I can see that my price is just going from $8 to 10. And that's just a small price change. Yet we can see my quantity demanded is seeing a huge shift. Now, what does that mean? Well, that's gonna mean it's more elastic. Charts like this will show a very strong relationship between the quantity and our price. It's very susceptible to price changes. A lot of times this is normally when there's substitute goods or you don't have to buy this good. So if I raise my price just a little bit, consumers are gonna say, I'm done, I'll go buy something else. Or if we go back to our inelastic example, I can see here, maybe they have to buy this no matter what. I'm gonna to have to see a big price change just to influence my demand because no matter what, they're gonna buy it and there might not be substitutes. So that's just some of the things that's happening with just the charts themselves and how we can already start to understand some elasticity that is at play. By now, you should have a good understanding of how to read and interpret a supply and demand chart. If you have any questions at all, make sure to post them in the comments below. I'll try to get to as many as I can. And if this video helped you out, make sure to subscribe. You can click the subscribe button in the bottom corner of this video. And if you want to also get notifications of when I post new videos, click the bell as well. I'm Mr. Sin. We just learned about supply and demand. And until next time, I'll see you online.